Hi, this is episode 4 of Vlogmas, aka Creepy Christmas. Uh, I'm Fox M, your faux dramatic reader of all things horror and spooky during this otherwise cheery time of year. Thanks for tuning in. Today I'll be reading Black Mass by C. A. Virouette. The Detroit Blight Authority had come through the neighborhood the week before Christmas. The dilapidated, unidentifiable structures, empty houses, piles of tires, abandoned cars, and trash piles had been scooped up and taken out. The neighborhood had been reduced to barren land, the bustling suburb transformed into a rural area with out-of-place sidewalks. Two houses remained on the block, one of them inhabited by Reggie Palmer. Reggie had lived there with his entire family at one point, but as the economy crashed and crime rose, most of his family moved on. His brother, sister, aunt, and cousins that had once crowded the two-story single-family house had gone away looking for work or had even gone to college. Reggie stayed. He had no intention of leaving the family home. He was resourceful and went looking for any kind of scrap he could sell out of the abandoned homes. Old clawfoot tubs sold well in the upper middle class neighborhoods and there wasn't likely one left within a 25 mile radius of Reggie's home. While the others focused on ripping copper pipes out of the houses, Reggie had an eye for the old charm that certain pieces of a house maintained. He salvaged what he could and sold enough to make ends meet. He filled the gap by planting a vegetable garden and eating wildlife for his meat. Of course, in an area full of abandoned homes, there were also abandoned pets, and Reggie considered this wildlife. Reggie had defended himself from packs of wild dogs on more than one occasion and ate well for weeks. As the dog population dwindled, the cat population increased. Up until the week before Christmas, the piles of tires provided safe haven for countless cats. The cats segregated themselves by family, with a large family of black cats taking most of the room. Reggie looked out of his kitchen window at the green expanse that now surrounded him. Where did the cats go? He thought. He could not see a single one, and he knew they must have been freezing. Reggie went down into his basement to retrieve two small traps meant for raccoons. He built a small fire in a barrel and placed the traps near the warm barrel. He wouldn't need to put food in the traps to catch some cats. He knew the warmth would be enough. It was Christmas Eve, and Reggie had set up a pathetic plastic tree that had been used by his family for over a decade. The plastic pine needles were barely hanging on, and many fell off when he removed the tree from its case. The lights still worked, and Reggie decorated the tree with heirloom ornaments. His siblings promised they would come on Christmas Day, and he wanted them to remember the good times. He looked out the kitchen window at the traps, no cats. He looked across the large, empty lot at the only other house left. Mr. Danvers had lived there even longer than Reggie, and he was the same age as Reggie's mother would be had she survived cancer. Reggie decided to head over and see if the old man had any traps he could use. Reggie walked the short distance between houses slowly. The change was incredible. No more garbage, no more abandoned houses, and no cats. He could barely smell the disgusting cat urine smell. Reggie chuckled as he remembered how funny the Blight Authority looked in their hazmat suits as they cleared the tires. I'll have to really cook them good, filthy animals. He knocked on Mr. Danvers' door. He listened closely for the old man's cane hitting the floor. Nothing. Reggie knocked again. No answer. He looked into the window and saw the dark outline of the man's tree, covered in yellow and green lights. Reggie walked back to his home. He would check in later. Reggie looked out the win kitchen window at the empty traps. He pulled out two large bottles of beer and sat down in front of the TV. Before he fell into a deep sleep, he heard a trap door shut and panicked meowing. 
Reggie awoke to a smell in the early hours of the morning. At first he couldn't place it. He stumbled out of his chair, half drunk, breathing deeply. He looked around the dark room, holding onto his chair for balance. He couldn't see anything. The green and yellow lights from his tree were not casting any additional light. He squinted at the tree and wrinkled his nose. It was cat urine. That awful smell was cat urine. He stumbled to the kitchen window. Two cats were stuck in each trap. How the hell do you smell that bad? Reggie stumbled back to his living room to find his jacket. His Christmas tree seemed to sway as he walked past. At that moment, he realized that his Christmas tree did not have yellow and green lights. His skin crawled with goose flesh as he slowly turned to look at the tree. The yellow and green lights were blinking from a furry black mass. Not a single green plastic needle was visible. From the top of the tree, he heard a growl. The cat at the apex of the mass stood. Its green eyes seemed to glow brighter as it growled at Reggie. All right, you guys are cold. All right, I'll let your friends out. Reggie held his hands out as if surrendering and walked slowly towards his back door. The cats had joined together in growling, and the threatening feline symphony made Reggie's stomach drop. As he turned his back to open the door, he heard the soft jingle of ornaments and the crunch of them as they broke underneath hundreds of paws. Behind him, the black mass, with its hundreds of eyes and feet, moved in a single wave towards its prey. The cats pounced on Reggie at once and began to bite. His muffled screams fell on Mr. Danvers' dead ears. Again, thanks for watching. That was episode four of Creepy Christmas, uh, my Vlogmas attempt. Um, if you'd like to see more of C.A. Virouette's work, please check out the links in the description and make sure you subscribe if you'd like to see more spooky holiday tales.